name's Jeff Kapenitz. I'm from uh, the MEP in Philly. And I'm here, I'm here to talk about experimenting. Um, the four steps of, of exper or the fourth step, that being experimenting. Uh, and finally, we're here. How many of you like to experiment? How many of you like to do? Yeah, it's a lot of fun, isn't it? All right, it's a lot of fun. So here we are. Why do we need to experiment? Why? Uh, what we know is that since the path to that target condition that, um, uh, that Susan just laid out, tied up to where we are uh, in the current condition, tied to that challenge, we need to, to learn our way. And how do we learn? By experimenting. By experimenting. And this is what that cycle looks like. It's the executing phase. Thank you so much for the previous three steps for planning us out. And now, what are we going to do? We're going to run with some experiments. But the first thing that we need to do, folks, it's time to put on our scientist coat. So what I did was I brought in my scientist coat. Even though I'm not a scientist, I'm going to act like a scientist. My mother always said, Jeffrey, dress for success. So here I am as a scientist. There's a story behind this coat, but I won't get into the detail. So we, we play the role of a scientist. An experiment, let's start with what is an experiment? An experiment is taking a step with the intent of learning something. And I emphasize, I emphasize that word learning. Learning. Not jumping to a conclusion, but learning. But what do we use to practice this, this experimenting? How do we practice? Well, Mike was gracious enough to, I want to say, create this, this experimental record to help us out. This is, I want to say, my, my, my stamp that I use, my go-to all the time. It is a great, great, I want to say, scientific way of running experiments. And you need to be very, very cautious here, folks. This is not a to-do list. How many of you all remember the old Kaizen newspapers? All right? How well are they, did they work for you? Yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, they were, but, but it was what we knew back then. So when you're talking about the experiment form, the, uh, the, the, the record, start off with what obstacle are you working on? What are you going after? What process? Who's the learner? Who's the coach? And then, drop down into, well, what's your step? What do you need to learn? What do you need to learn? Once you've identified that step and what you need to learn, what are you trying to do? What's your expectation? What are you expecting by running this, th th this experiment? And how are you going to measure whether or not you're improving? Or not even improving, but that you are learning. Once you've done that, now let's drop down and have a coaching cycle with that coach so that that coach can kind of guide and ask and understand what you're trying to do. So now you've learned, OK? Now you've, you, 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 you're, you're, you're framed up for that experiment. Now what, you, what do you do? You go ahead and you run that experiment. And my, my advice to all of you, please, 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 I run into this, this all the time. You don't need to solve world hunger right now. Right size your experiment. So, so often we hear, we don't have time to do daily, to da to do daily experimentation. Why? They're out, they're this broad, they're this wide. We're talking about some small steps here, folks. Small steps. So right size it, right size it. Run the experiment, gather the data. What was the observations? from that experiment. And what did you learn? What did you learn? And what you just learn from that experiment, folks, it's either going to rebuke what you thought from your hypothesis of going in, or it may agree to it. And what did you learn will drive the next step, your next experiment that you will conduct. I'm going to share a few examples with you 
And this is just two small case studies uh, that I, I, I put together. Uh, the first one was focused on a production supply chain challenge that, that, that an organization was having. The group that I was working with included some managers, some supervisors, and the, and the associates involved uh, with, with the manufacturing of this product. The challenge, their overall challenge, was to provide a 98% on-time delivery to all customers by June 2018. Their rally cry, their rally cry was run at 98 versus catching at 98. They were hitting, they were close to 98, but they were always catching it. Somebody was doing some heroic act to get them there. Sort of like what um, um, Susan was alluding to, those reactive steps. Let's run. Let's have a constant pattern of running at 98. My second case has to do with some, some students, I teach, I'm an adjunct uh, on the side, I teach a, 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 a systems engineering class at one of the local Philly uh, universities, and the group that I was dealing with were seniors and some grad students. What my challenge was, was to introduce these, these um, engineers to prepare the future engineers to think scientifically by the end of the, by the, end of the term. I know it was a very, very long stretch, but at least introduce them to that. So my rally cry there was not the answers, but the questions. In that, that second case, what we actually did was I went to one of my clients that I'm working with, and they allowed us to experiment in their facility. So here's the first experimental record. The, the obstacle that we were working on, and again, the rally cry was run at 98, not catch at 98. Uh, was identifying or working towards parts presentation and accuracy. After we went through and we developed kind of the challenge, where we were, we found that one of the obstacles that these folks that were, were dealing with was parts presentation and accuracy, accuracy of parts to the, to, to the cell. What did we expect? What did we expect? That 20% of the ABC product parts would drive 80% of the picker's movement, picker's incurred, uh, wasted time and, and, and efforts. And we went out and we watched and we observed and we saw 161 picks, 120 minutes, and many safety issues. These folks were climbing up ladders. And what we learned out of that, what we learned out of that, excessive ladder usage. Very, very unsafe uh, condition. So that drove our next step. And that was the, the, the very next day. Uh, arrange high volume uh, items on shelf two and, two and three so they didn't have to go up and down the ladder. And as you can see here, folks, we just continued all through a total of four different cycles, okay, four different improvement cycles to drive just that one obstacle, that one obstacle that we were focusing on. And here's just a few snapshots of that, that, that current condition, the observations. You can see here uh, an employee up and down on a ladder, the reaching. These folks were getting very frustrated, and there were some, some uh, near misses recorded due to this process. And that's what we were focusing on. My second, my second case has to do here with, again, uh, uh, the, 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 the students. The actual client that I was working with allowed us in, they were very gracious to allow us in, and you may, you may recognize the name, Penn Fishing, any, any fisher, fishing people in, in the room? Penn Fishing, okay. Uh, they were in, introducing a new line uh, to the marketplace, and they couldn't, they couldn't hit uh, the, the projected volumes that they, they needed to do. So they opened up the doors for us, we understood the, uh, the challenge that they, were, uh, that they were going after, but we didn't know enough about the assembly process. So our first, our first uh, experiment was to go down and learn. And the students wanted to immediately, immediately do. No, 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 we need to learn, we need to understand. So what we did is we went down, we visited and discovered what the overall scope and challenge was. We, the organization would not be able to uh, deliver the, uh, the projected volume rates for the new product line. And then we, from that, we walked away with identified obstacles that we, as a group, and you can see here, there was the team um, that we were going to uh, work towards. From that, we chose, we chose 
the, the, the cell layout that we would, we would work on. And we ran several, several iterations of improvement. And you can see there uh, some of, the, some of the, uh, the, the students there working on that cell. Very, very uh, impactful to the, uh, to, to the organization. So some lessons learned. Some lessons learned. How, qu how quickly we jumped to conclusions. These students were, were, were ready to roll. Okay? They thought they knew the answers. They thought they knew the answers. Experimenting, folks, is not about implementing solutions. The outcomes of the experiments will drive that next step. Let's predict, let's test, let's gather the data. What did the data tell us? And evaluate, which will drive our next step. Our second lesson that I've, that, that I've learned, we should, not, we should not allow our spirit to be stifled by failure our spirit to, to increase our, our, our knowledge threshold. Unexpected outcomes are part of the process. They are not a final outcome. Don't allow the failures or the unexpected outcomes to uh, diminish your, 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 your spirit in moving forward. Too often, too often, oh, we tried that, it didn't work. Well, why didn't it work? Learn by doing versus learn and doing. Practicing on real processes with real challenges helps to generate a mindset change. Don't train and then do. Let's do and train at the same time. That's what our, the, the, the kind of approach is. We don't know what we don't know. So let's go out. Let's experiment with it. And in a closing thought here, in a closing thought here, I, I was reading a book that uh, I, I came across, a quote from Benjamin Barber. I don't divide the world into winners or losers, successes or failures, weak or strong. I divide the world into learners and non-learners. There are people who learn, who are open to what happens around them, who listen, who hear the lessons. When they have a miss, they learn from it and don't do it again. And when they do something that works, they learn and do it even better and harder the next time. The question that I ask you, is whether you are, a, or you are a success or a failure, but whether you are a learner or non-learner. 